so happy today to be able to host uh, one of our residents who started the, uh, a group here, and I'm going to welcome Marie Lee. Hello, Marie. Hello, Fran. And Marie is, in case you don't know it, is the person who originated the new group here for the hearing impaired and those who are having trouble hearing things, talking, uh, etc. Marie, welcome and, and tell us about the group and how, you said you might want to open with a quote. What is that? Well, um, we all know Helen Keller. Yes. And a famous quote attributed to Helen Keller is, blindness separates people from things. Deafness mm -hmm. separates people from people. From people, yes. That is a famous quote. Yeah. Yes. And when I moved to Greenspring in May of this year, May of last year. Or May of last year, excuse me. May of, <laughs> May of 2015. Right. Um, and had dinner with various residents. I noticed that many of them would tell me that they were not participating in activities because they had some hearing loss. And I felt that since I also have a very severe, profound, almost deaf hearing loss, mm -hmm. and I use a cochlear implant to hear, mm -hmm that maybe I could uh, share some of the tips that I've learned over the past 35 years since I started to lose my hearing as an adult. And uh, so I went to my community resource person, Kelly Luke Shander, and she helped me uh, to find a room and a time <clears throat> that we could have a hearing loss support group. As of today, we've had three meetings. Um, we've had an overflow crowd on the first meeting and the second two, I've had over 60 people come to these meetings, which are now in the theater. Mm -hmm. um, at our last meeting last week, Green Springs audiologist, Dr. Gina Cravado was our special guest. Uh, she answered questions uh, from the audience. And uh, we also learned uh, a few more tips on uh, the best way to here in various situations here at Greenspring. I suppose my, um, my favorite tip is one that is going to be on the scroll as we announce our March 17 meeting, and that is that if you have hearing aids, wear them every day, all day. That doesn't mean you shouldn't take them out in the evening or at night when you're sleeping, but you need to wear them all day, every day, because your brain and your processing centers for hearing need that stimulation. So I hear people tell me, I got new hearing aids and I put them in and I can hear everything but what I wanna hear. And so they take them out and they find a place in the drawer and that's where the hearing aid dies. Well, if you keep wearing that new hearing aid your brain is soon going to understand what you want to hear and what you don't want to hear. And so you can train your brain to hear the voices and not the refrigerator running. Mm -hmm. So those are just some of the tips that I'm trying to impart to people so that they do get out into the community, they get back into their bridge group, they start um, having a conversation at the dinner table by selecting where they should sit to have better hearing. Yeah. So that's essentially right. where we are. Well, uh, and those are such um, uh, really good tips. The other one you didn't mention, and you know, I've mentioned this in the Green Spring Players, um, when one of the actors puts their hand up to their face, when there's, even though they have a mic on, but if they block their mouth, sometimes the audience isn't hearing them because seeing see the mouth and seeing the words, uh, it's really important. Yes, and uh, that was one of the first uh, tips that I gave to my group in October. And I was very surprised that there were so many people in the audience who had not realized that they could <coughs> hear better if they watched someone's mm -hmm. lips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I always joke that I can hear best in daylight. When the sun <laughs> starts going down, so does my hearing. Well, I've heard people say, too, oh, I don't hear as well if I don't have my glasses on. 
Well, that could be, You know, too. that's another, uh, even though they don't have hearing aids, but again, they're depending on the visual, uh, facial expressions uh, and whatever. Yes. Um, I'm trying to incorporate some videos uh, with, uh, to teach people some of the basics of speech reading. Mm -hmm. And we did one of those in a, a meeting in December, and we'll continue with that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but most people are speech reading and they just don't realize that they are speech reading. Right. But it's important also not just to uh, read someone's lips, but to see them. And I think some people are um, not really afraid, but just discouraged because they don't want to go to someone and say, would you please face me when you yeah. speak to me? <clears throat> and they don't want to keep saying what? Exactly. What did you say? <laughs> exactly. And so rather than <clears throat> keep saying Hearing people say what, especially family members, it, it really is difficult within family because everyone is knows everyone right. so well, but someone will walk into the other room and begin to speak to right. someone with a hearing loss, and then they think, well, this person is losing their mind because they're not right. paying any attention This to happened me. last week. My son was visiting me, and I'm, I'm losing. I have lost quite a bit of hearing in my left ear. But... My son was visiting for several days. And, and first of all, he said to me, does the TV have to be so loud? And I said, well, you don't like captioning, and you don't want it loud. You have to make a choice, because I either have to have captioning on, or I need the TV loud. And not, not overly loud, but louder than his younger ears yes. you know, can yes. do. And then also, he walked in the kitchen, starts talking to me from the kitchen. And I'm going, Roger, I can't hear you, honey. You have to come back in here. So you're right about family members. Uh, um, yes, I said, they're you the know, hardest ones to train. <laughs> and the younger they are, the grandchildren, their rapid speech, they speak as fast as their little thumbs go on those gadgets, you know. Yes, and as a matter of fact, I have two uh, teenage grandchildren, um, and when they were preteens, <clears throat> I decided I need to learn how to text right? because they were texting their friends and it was difficult for them mm -hmm. to communicate with me. As you said, they speak rapidly. They want to do something else at the same time yeah. they're speaking with grandmother. And so I learned how to text mm -hmm. so that I could send messages back and mm -hmm. forth and I could see and read them. That brings me to another topic and that is assistive listening devices. Mm -hmm which are uh, prevalent in the hearing loss community. They're helps, they're you know, often technical helps for people. Mm -hmm. And in our group meetings, we've been talking about the caption call telephone, which uh, is available here at Greenspring. There is a federal subsidy, so there is no charge for the phone, for the installation, or for the service. Mm -hmm. And when someone talks on the telephone and a call comes in, the words that the person is saying are put on a screen on the telephone mm -hmm. so that the hearing impaired, mm -hmm. impaired person can not only use <coughs> residual hearing to hear what they're saying, but also uh, to see what they're saying mm -hmm. in real time. Mm -hmm. So we've been pushing to go to a social worker, ask for the application for a caption call telephone, Mm -hmm. and get the process started. That's a great idea. Uh, that Because when you're using um, the system that the telephone company offers to any of, of hearing impaired people or deaf people, there is a delay in when they're transcribing what... So this is obviously a step up in yes. the technology. This is almost in real time. Yeah. They're using voice recognition technology. Yeah. Oh, every now and then there might be a word or two oh, sure. that is not uh, distinguishable just That's as right. it is on television captions. That's right. That's exactly And, uh, I mean, getting back to your son not wanting to watch the captions, yeah. um, I think you just need to put your foot down and say, we're going to just keep the captions well, on. Well, I, I keep it on all the time. Yeah. As I told you before the show, I have a, a deaf granddaughter who is now 25 years old. Mm -hmm. She's been deaf since birth. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, the only way we do communicate is texting, emails, uh, or, or American Sign Language. Well, in fact, 
we both we do signed English because she's very literate uh, yes. in her education, and so um, we do signed English rather than more than we do uh, AS, uh, ASL. But uh, anyway, um, but it's on all the time on my TV since she's been since we found out she was deaf, and so that she can enjoy you know and etc. And that, but anyhow. Um, yeah, yeah, you do have to put your foot down with some people. Besides, talking about brain training, I, as I said to my son, you know, it's interesting. I can look at what's happening on TV and read the captioning at the same time. It doesn't distress me at all. Um, sometimes when something is a completely foreign film, I have a little more trouble. Mm -hmm. but, but if it's just a spoken English show and captioning is on, I don't. I sort of rely on the captioning for what I didn't quite hear. Exactly. You know, uh, more and so. And that is brain training. And it's totally brain training. Yes. You know, if you do it all the time, you're going to yes. find yourself totally adjusted to it. Yes. Um, uh, at one point in my life, I worked at Gallaudet University, uh -huh. which is the university for of the deaf. And I noticed that they, when they use sign language. <clears throat> Their hands are usually in front of them, mm -hmm. but they weren't looking at other people's hands when they were using American Sign Language. They were looking at the face. That's right. And face, that's because the, the your, your vision right. will expand that's right. to what you need by training your brain that I'm that's going to right. see it down here, but I'm also going to look at someone's face, which is just the custom right. uh, when you're speaking with someone. Right. Right. One other thing that I'm uh, pushing um, is for people to come to the hearing loss support group meetings. Many people here and everywhere say, I don't have a hearing loss. And uh, they might even have been tested and find out that they do have a hearing loss, but I can hear just fine. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just trying to encourage people to uh, just own up to your hearing loss and just say, I really do have a hearing loss mm -hmm. and I need some help. Mm -hmm. Rather than to be in denial about a hearing loss, it's so much easier to just learn some tips and learn some ways, get some technology that you need. Your life can be fuller and richer. Yeah, the whole enhancement of life. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Exactly, and your life here at Greenspring, because there are so many wonderful groups, so many activities, so many wonderful people. It would be a shame to just shut yourself off, <coughs> close the door to your apartment, and get a takeout meal, mm -hmm. and then sooner or later you're spiraling into depression. And so that's why mm -hmm. I have my support group, so that people can get out and meet others who also have a similar problem. And uh, it's been very enjoyable. It's been, and I just uh, I am really excited that people are coming out. Right. And your next one is when? March the seventeenth. <coughs> That's St. Patrick's Day. Yes, it is. Do they have to wear green that day? Well, they can. They're welcome. <laughs> However, they want to come. What time of day <laughs> is it? Our meetings are at ten thirty in mm -hmm. the morning in mm -hmm. the Village Square Theater. Right. We will meet every other <coughs> month on the odd months of the year. Right, right. So we'll have a meeting in March and another one in May. Uh -huh, that's great. So we're doing fun. I'm, many of the people in my group do not have email. And so I started yesterday, I decided I needed to get a message out to these people to just enhance what they may have learned mm -hmm. or heard at the meetings. And so I've prepared just a one-page flyer of an update mm -hmm. of what we talked about and some of the hints that we learned so I can have this copied and put in the cubbies of those people who don't have um, email. And on the bulletin boards, yes, I mean, there it, is it, would, it would attract someone just immediately because of you having the ear oh, image yes. on there. Uh, well, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to find a little logo that we can use sure. so that other people at Greenspring will know that this person doesn't hear well. Even our, many of people in the group said, is there a way we could have a different color name tag or something on our name mm -hmm. tag or, or, or in some way show that we don't hear. Right. Mine does say hearing impaired. 
yeah. um, as does so many others. But, right. uh, but we're looking for something distinctive. So if anyone has an idea on what we could do, I'd like to hear it. That's terrific, terrific. Well, we could have lots more discussion because um, I'm interested in, like, when you got your cochlear implant, blah, blah, blah. But we're not going to do that on the show because we don't have time. Okay. And we want to thank you very much for coming today. Thank you, Fran. I appreciate it. Okay.